You know, I was reading the, your biography in the program, or whatever they call it, all the things you've done. Oh, yeah. And my eye went over the last line of type twice. I thought, did I see that right? And it said, among other things, motorcycle enthusiast. Oh, yes. I yeah. never thought I'd say this, but what sort of bike do you dig, Sir Ralph? Uh, <laughs> what, what are you, uh... Well, as a matter of fact, just technically, I've got a, I've got a Norton now, uh, a 750cc Norton. But I see a lot of bikes. I'm very interested in the bikes I see. But these bikes that they have in New York, uh, with these high mm. handles, it looks very awkward to me. I like to have my control rather dark. You do. Have you driven one of these new bikes? Have you driven a motorbike at all? I, I have driven a, a small one, as, coincidentally, recently, and I have a very large uh, piece of oh. skin missing here to prove it. Yeah. Um, well, I've got some bits of my head missing to prove. <laughs> <laughs> I've killed myself many, many times on motor bicycles. You actually do have a couple of scars. Are those actually from the <laughs> Well, they are, as a matter of fact. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I was motor... <laughs> you really are? You motorcycle types always amaze me. But I, just... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was cycling in London the other day, down at Hampstead tube station, go down a little hill, and there's a light, and I came down very nicely, and I stopped. I thought, very nicely, I wasn't thinking anything about it. And the light was red, and I rested my foot on the curb, and I just sat there waiting to turn green. And a little boy, a little boy came out to me, and he said, that's extremely dangerous, Governor. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I couldn't understand what he meant. So I said, well, how, how, how do you mean dangerous? He said, you on that motorbike with that pipe in your mouth. Oh. And he was quite right, because if I fell off the bike, you know, if you have a pipe in your mouth, and he taught me a lesson, I've never got put a pipe in my mouth again since, since I've been on a bike. I'm glad he said that. I'd hate to think of you swallowing a pipe, well, uh, <laughs> losing you to, to the theater. Yeah. Uh, what's the last time you had a dairy cream whirl? <laughs> Does that question surprise you? Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you one of the... St I've never asked a guest that, and it must surprise <laughs> me that I would ask you that. <laughs> but I, one of the starts of my life, one day I had seen the heiress on The Late Show, and the next morning I was walking in Central Park, and I saw what looked like Sir Ralph Richardson standing in line to get a dairy cream whirl at that place near the book. <laughs> and it was you, I don't know if you remember it, and you sat in the, there with some friends, I believe your wife was along, and you, and you were eating it, and I just couldn't believe it, and there was an English couple, and they were as stunned as I am, was, and the wife gave her husband hell because they had obviously had an argument about bringing the camera. And she said, you, <laughs> you rotten egg, we would have had a chance to see Sir Ralph eating an ice cream. Ice you know, cream like world. It was you, was it a Dairy Cream world? Well, I, I don't know. I think, yes, last, maybe when I had my little boy over here. Yes, it may have been. I think it was about the time of making Long Day's Journey. That's you know, it, possibly. yes, that would have been, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Did you bring a, a motorcycle to America? No, no, I, I didn't, unfortunately, yeah. no. No, I didn't bring any toys with me at all. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I like my toys, and those are the things I miss, really, from being away. As a matter of fact, for two, I very much miss my parrot. I've got a parrot, and I'm very fond of my parrot, and I miss it very much. It's a nice parrot, and uh, <laughs> it's very pleasant. When I come home from the theatre at night, he gives me such a wonderful call. He says, Hello, Roy, he says, I don't know what it means. Hello, Roy, he says, and it's, it's so cheerful to hear him. Wait a minute. Your palate speaks to you? The, an artist's palate? No, my parrot. Oh, oh, parrot. I'm sorry. I knew you were a painter, and I thought you were talking about your palate. I speak very really badly. Yes, it's true. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> You, you uh, might have gotten somewhere in the theater if you'd spoken better. <laughs> and, uh... No, this is a green parrot. <laughs> and I bought this parrot <laughs> in Madrid. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> Very clearly. And when, when I bought this parrot, <laughs> I said, has it got a, a cage? I bought it from a man in the street, in the flea market, as they call it there. Mm -hmm. And I said, does, does a cage go with it? <laughs> no, he said, this parrot's never been in a, in a cage. But I said, I've never had a parrot before. 
So I said, well, what, how do I sort of... Well, so he said... <laughs> well, I mean, how does he live, you see, on the stand? So he said, oh, he, 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 he's on a stand. So I said, does the stand go with the bird? <laughs> so he said, yes. But the, well, I said, I'll buy the bird. I fell in love with it at once. It wasn't very cheap. I had an interpreter with me because I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> he said, well, pay for the bird, but it, don't pay for the stand until you've got it. No, I said, I trust that man. Curse enough, he only had one arm, this man that sold me the parrot. My wife said the parrot probably bit it off. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, well, where are you living? And I told him the hotel. And he said, well, about four o'clock this afternoon, I'll send the stand round. So yeah. I said, right, fine. And at four o'clock, knock on the door, and two little boys, probably, that were his sons, I don't know, quite small little children, came with the parrot's stand. And uh, one of them had a camera slung over his uh, shoulder. So I was delighted, and the bird recognized his old stand at once, and everything was fine. And one of the little boys said to me very timidly, Sir, could I take a photograph? And so I said, Oh, by all means. And like a foolish, damn, vain chap I am, I turned to the mirror to make sure that my hair looked all right. I turned round, he was taking a photograph of the bird. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very modest story. I'm well, glad you told it. Yeah. We, uh, sometime I would love to meet your parrot, and, well, I, and I, hope, I do understand. Yes, if I were here longer, I'd bring him with me. Great. We, we have a message, and we'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you.